The Connecticut River Valley was once home to tens of thousands of acres of tobacco fields. Today that number is just down to a few thousand, but if you look closely, you'll still find farmers growing it, and you'll also see it in some pretty popular cigars. Along the main drag through Enfield, Connecticut, you'll find the Connecticut Valley Tobacconist. And inside, beside shelves of tobacco, cigars, and other smoking-related stuff, you'll find Andrew Tarnowitz. He's the son of the store's owner and today helps run the place. More than likely, he'll be puffing on a cigar. When I turned 18, I tried cigarettes. I couldn't do it. I just, I said, this just isn't for me. Fortunately for Andrew and other cigar aficionados around here, they are deep in the heart of tobacco country. Connecticut tobacco country? Correct. It's no surprise to farmer Stephen Jarmuk. The area's soil makeup along with warm summers makes for perfect growing conditions. Not far from the tobacco shop, Stephen's crop is just a few weeks shy of harvest. In the rolling hills of this New England state, tobacco brings in more than $56 million a year to Connecticut farmers. Jarmuk is a third generation tobacco grower. My grandfather came here from Poland uh, in the early 1900s and he bought uh, our home farm uh, where uh, you know my father grew up uh, and then I grew up uh, and that was like a 40 acre farm uh, and at that time the tobacco was the cash crop you know it, the farming was it was almost like subsistence farming they'd have a few cows and a few goats and they'd grow some vegetables and then tobacco was the cash crop it's not just any tobacco Connecticut's tobacco gets used for cigars and more specifically for the cigar wrapper when we're trying to grow wrapper, cigar wrapper, the top leaves tend to be the darkest because they're exposed directly to the sun. This leaf right here. This leaf right here. Uh, so the, the top leaves that get the most sun also get to be the most, the, the thickest leaves. And it's just, it's just like the human, human body. If you're out in the sun, you get tan and your skin gets a little leathery. That's kind well, of how this is feeling. It's and, nice and thick. And it's nice and thick, exactly right. Uh, so, and this leaf is gonna get much thicker. Uh, it's still going to be out here, oh, about 25 days. And you uh, want this to be, you don't want bug damage, you don't, you don't want cracks, anything. Right, no cracks, no bug damage, um, you know, because, okay, you don't want holes in a cigar. It's got to be, it's got to be pristine wrapper. So uh, when you, this will be dried. Correct. And then it gets, it, when you dry it, I imagine it shrinks a little bit. Uh, it does shrink. Uh, there's uh, probably about 10% shrinkage okay. uh, overall. Um, but this leaf will get much bigger yet also. Uh, with these broadleaf plants, we just broke the flower off. That's going to stop that plant from growing any higher and allow those leaves to broaden out, get longer, bigger, thicker, and heavier. And that, that's what they want. After the leaves are harvested, they get dried in tobacco barns and then shipped to cigar makers. We're still renowned for growing some of the finest wrapper in the world. Tobacco has a long history in this part of the country. Early settlers learned about tobacco from Native Americans. Farmers have been growing in the Connecticut River Valley, stretching from Connecticut to Massachusetts since the 1800s. That history is on display at the Connecticut Valley Tobacco Museum in Windsor Locks. Some of our guests are here for the uh, historical aspect of it. They want to know more about it. They're not necessarily smokers. We do get uh, cigar smokers in here that want to know, know more about the product that they're purchasing. Uh, I'd say overall, regardless of whether we get a non-smoker in here or a smoker, it's not about the smoking and it's not about the finished product. It's about the agricultural uh, crop that was grown here and was such an important part of the landscape for so many years and can still be seen on the landscape in the valley. There are fewer Connecticut farmers growing tobacco today. Rising health concerns are one reason. Another, the impact of urban expansion, reducing the amount of farmland in the area. Land became more valuable as commercial and real estate property. It may have been in the third or fourth generation uh, in the family. They might not necessarily want to be farmers anymore. Despite health concerns and mandated warnings on tobacco packaging, farmers here say this crop has helped grow the area's economy. There's also been an increase in population diversity as foreign workers have been brought in to work the tobacco crops. 
like these workers from Jamaica, here for the summer. Today they'll spend hours in the hot sun harvesting and packing shade tobacco, which is grown under tents to reduce the drying effects of sunlight. Despite a higher profile in the popularity of cigar smoking, it's unlikely there'll be a return to the scale of tobacco farming that was once found in this river valley. But cigar smokers in these parts take pride in their puffs and can even taste the difference in the different styles of Connecticut tobacco leaves. Well, for the shade, it gives it a little bit of a spicy kind of a kick. For the broadleaf, it gives the Maduro a little bit of a subtle sweetness. I mean, it really, it goes really well. A lot of the premium cigars in the world use the Connecticut tobacco. It's a labor of love. I mean, there's nothing better than to go out and look at a nice crop, okay, and sort of see the fruits of your labor. Then for guys to come and say, you grow tobacco in Connecticut, it's a great thing.